Hey guys, Dr. Dobson, uh, we're going to be doing a repair of a fractured anterior. This was a 2-1 patient came in for a spec, wanted their tooth fixed. Uh, so we did it, same appointment, froze them up, and we did a 2-1 um, MIBL. Here's some footage of the case. We're going to make a retentive notch in the uh, lingual surface, do a facial bevel for aesthetic blending, uh, matrix it with a mylar, precondition with phosphoric acid, restore with Fuji, or sorry, with uh, Equia Forte, and then trim it back and then uh, varnish it with um, an unfilled resin. So we'll get into the full uh, procedure footage here. First thing we're gonna do is actually do some plaque removal uh, with some pumice and a polishing cup. Uh, there's a good amount of plaque on all the teeth. You can see the two three has a small buccal cavity that I said we should probably get you back and do a full exam. See if there's anything else going on uh, that needs attention. Um, but uh, this appointment, we just did the restoration. So we'll um, we'll pumice the tooth in question, the two one, as well as the um, upper three to three, and then we'll give it a good rinse here. Going to uh, next step is going to be a rubber dam application. So we're going to punch um, the upper three to three to isolate, and uh, no need to use clamps if you're just working on anterior teeth. I'll typically just put in some floss leave the floss in between the three and the four or use a wedget if the uh, contacts are a little bit more open in this case the contacts were tight so we just use a um, floss these are all the burrs that we're going to be using uh, in this video let's see we got a um, very small round diamond for um, for the notch and then a um, a couple of flames so I always like to um, make a fairly uh, generous retentive notch in my class four restorations because they fall out notoriously. So, um, you know, you got plenty of tooth to work with uh, on both sides. So I like to make a good two millimeters or three millimeters of a uh, retentive groove dovetail into the, uh, the body of the tooth, just like I would with a class two restoration. Dental school says that you can get away without these things and just have a bevel, but I don't believe that to be the case, at least not what I've observed clinically. Um, we're going to do a, a facial bevel for aesthetic blending uh, on the on the buckle side, and then we're actually going to take it along the incisal side as well, just because there's some very thin enamel there that we want um, that we don't we don't want it to be that thin. So little uh little bit on the uh, incisal edge just to round out those spots we're going to make the um the dovetail a little bit deeper just because we have the tooth to work with and we don't want this thing to fall out so i uh i, I order my diamonds from strauss um or all, most of my burrs from strauss now and they had this little promotion for this little product called the butterfly matrix and so decided to give it a try and faff around and see if i could figure out how to use it but I couldn't figure it out, so um, we ended up just putting it away and uh, using a standard Mylar, which has worked for me in the past. It's fun to try new uh, new products that might work and make it easier, even if you got to pay for them and they don't work out. I think I think that the uh, it's worth it because every once in a while you'll stumble upon a gem that will work and become part of your your workflow. Um, so we're going to precondition the surface of the tooth now with um, phosphoric acid. For five seconds give it a very thorough rinse and a thorough dry as well i found that um, fuji and equia like to bond more tightly to a drier surface uh, we're going to apply our material here uh, basically a full cartridge of equia forte i think this was shade a2 or a3 and we're going to adapt it with a moist cotton pellet and uh, <clears throat> this will make sure that it's bound tightly to the margins and I get the sense that maybe it packs it in a little bit to the um, surface of the prep for a more intimate bond, um, but it might not feel the force that deep. That's just my thinking. So we'll adapt the material. We'll wait for five minutes while it sets, and then we're going to come back and begin uh, reducing the excess. Going to use a, a large uh, wheel here uh, for the lingual surface for the bulk uh, removal before switching to a large carbide. and uh, getting both angles there, direct and indirect. And we remember where the margins of the uh, of the fracture were, so we'll basically just kind of 
feather the material until we're back on those margins or slightly overextended. Patient has an open bite, fortunately, so um, so we, we can have a little bit of flexibility with the lingual surface of the tooth. And then we're going to um, begin reducing the facial uh, excess material with our um, fine diamond uh, flame burr on a high speed. And uh, something that I've learned actually that I uh, wasn't doing at the time that this restoration was done, which was a while ago, is um, that the uh, Equia Forte actually likes to be um, finished uh, with a with a wet surface. And I find that if uh, the material is finished with a dry surface, and it's not as important if it's a posterior area, then it will develop these sort of spider-like crack lines uh, in the material, which I don't know if it has uh, much of an impact on uh, the uh, structural durability of the material, just because I haven't really seen any fractures of, of this stuff since I've been using it, but it definitely doesn't look very aesthetic and you can notice it in the macro photo. You can't really see it from visually if you're looking at the patient from a couple feet away, but um, that's been my observation. So it's a, a little pearl that I use uh, going forward now. And then we'll take a, um, we'll just take a soft flex disc, a coarse one, and then begin pushing uh, the uh, restorative material from the outside in to make a nice um, contour of the tooth until we have uh, a somewhat symmetrical to one and I'll usually say the whole sisters not twins thing when it comes to aesthetics um, and we still have a ways to go on the lingual so we will um, we'll finish just gonna fast forward through the rest of the uh, trimming and shaping here and uh, I'll use the um, use the coarse wheel and then sometimes finish off with a medium or a fine and you can see those little dimples kind of in the material that may or may not get trimmed out even if they don't they'll get filled in with our uh, our coating agent and uh, it will look aesthetic anyway uh, we're going to use the uh, carbide on the lingual surface until we have a uh, anatomical looking shape Still a little ways to go there using direct and indirect vision. Gonna check the bite. Patient has a massive open bite, so we, we're really not too worried about about the uh, lingual contours. But getting close anyway. And so yeah, we'll finish. We'll finish with a medium, medium grit uh, soft flex disc, and uh, it's dry here. It, Probably would uh, be doing this under a moist surface nowadays to avoid those kind of spider line appearances. I'm gonna fast forward through the rest of the video and then see the, the macro in the end again. And then once we are satisfied with the shape, um, we'll either use a Equia coat, which has a bit of a yellow character, color character to it, uh, if we want to make it a little bit darker, or we'll use a uh, unfilled resin bonding agent. And I think that they all kind of have different color uh, character to them. The one that we use is essentially um, essentially clear. So when we wet the surface and uh, we see that we want some a bit of a darker value, then we'll use the Equia coat material, uh, or if we're satisfied um, as is, then we'll just use the uh, the clear unfilled resin bonding agent. And we're pretty much happy there contour wise, so we will rinse and dry and then apply our uh, coating agent here. So we'll dry it good. and uh, the unfilled resin bonding agent here. And that's it. And uh, here's a, a macro, patient was satisfied. And I'm sure that it will last. I have a bunch of these in the mouth and they're all doing fine, so. Give it a floss, check the contact. And that's, that's a wrap there.